tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are one of four people trapped in an isolated trading post somewhere in the Yukon Territory. The blizzard outside making escape impossible. And you know that before the spring thaws release you, before you can leave this cabin behind you, one of your companions, by consent of the others, will be killed. Listen now as Escape brings you Les Crutchfield's story, Judgment Day at Crippled Deer. I think it most unlikely that you ever heard of Crippled Deer Crossing. And you would have great difficulty locating it on a map. Even though the Yukon, for the most part, is vast and empty. Crippled Deer is a trading post. One sprawling pine log building, nothing more. But it's been my home and my business for 20 years now. And in the course of time, I have grown fond of it. Even grown fond of the bitter cruelty of the Great North. Yes, fond too of the long winters, snowbound, dark, when the trappers and miners have all gone outside, and we wait alone for the coming of spring. But of one such winter I am not fond. I still wake at times from dreaming of it, lie shuddering and fearful in the darkness. That was the winter of the black snow, when the horror came moaning on the wind and no man could look in another's eyes without shame and loathing and hate. Listen, LeClaire. Listen to it. I know that sound and the gray skies and the black in the west. It's going to hit us before tomorrow morning. Oh, it's close, all right. What do you think, Joe? Many wolf track in snow last night. Much hunting. Bear now asleep. I think maybe one day, maybe two, then big blizzard come. All right, mm. two days then. That's still cutting it too close. You ought to be here by now. <laughs> Real anxious, ain't you, Bella? Just can't wait. Honey, what smart cook got that we ain't got? You wouldn't know, Higgins. You would, though, wouldn't you, sweetheart? At least he's got a civil tongue in his head. And he's also got a lot of things you'd give your right arm for, Higgins. He knows how to laugh and live and how to make other people laugh and live. I'll bet he does. And he knows how to treat a woman. Yeah, any woman the way I hear it. You shut that mouth of yours right now or I'll make you wish you had. You will. Eh? Well, Higgins, in a day or two now the blizzard comes, close the trails. And we hear then all of us together the rest of the winter hear this one building, no way to get out. I tell you, once and for all, I will not have this kind of feeling. Then let him shut up. Can't take a joke. That's eh? enough, Higgins. He's got a right to be worried. I'm worried myself. Marco and Blakey don't have enough grub up there. If they get snowed into that mine, they can't possibly last out the winter. And that blizzard is close. Should have come down by now. I was just funny, her Leclerc. Sorry, Belle. Then watch what you're saying. Don't worry. They'll make it all right. Why, Marco Moore knows more about this country and the weather Why? than most people. No talk. He's down. Well, what is it, Joe? Dog keep. Sled coming. Marco. Hmm. Must be Marco and Blake. Where's those binoculars? Maybe we can see them when they come through the gap, huh? Hagan, help me open the window. Might not be them, Bell. Could be Robertson. Not him. He's too smart a money to get snowed in and this far from Dawson. Come on, push. Uh, yeah. All right, here. Let me see now. It's nearly too dark to... Hey, there's a sled, all right, coming out of the gap. It's them. It is them, isn't it? I can't quite make... No. 
No, it's only one man. A Marty. No. No, not Robertson. It, it's Blakey. But Marco is not with him. What? Blakey coming in alone. Alone? Two partner go. One come back very bad. No, no, no. Shut up, Joe. Don't pay any attention to him, Bell. Marco is all right. He better be. For Blakey's sake, he better be. They've been partners three seasons now, Bell. There's no reason to think anything is wrong. You look dog team, lead dog. Marco's dog. What? He's right. He's that big husky with a white star. Marco got him two years ago. Start up the man, Jim. Bring up the girl. Blake is back. I don't know. I just don't know. Prodigal son, gents. Starve for a fatted calf and maybe a glass of two rye whiskey. Blakey. <laughs> well, the Claire uglier than ever. Indian Joe, what are you having the tribe, huh? <laughs> are you... Oh, Higgins, look at that punch. And Bell. Ah, oh, sweetheart, you make up for all of them. Gorgeous. Blakey, where's Marco? Marco? Well, ain't he here yet? Should he be? Well, he pulled out a few days before I did. I stayed on till yesterday working the claim. Of course, he uh, <clears throat> he might have stopped off someplace. Where? Stopped off where? Well, maybe uh, maybe at Jackson River. The factory at the post there's got a pair of mighty pretty daughters, Bell. <laughs> you better get your dogs out of harness, Blake, and get your stuff inside. It may start snowing. Yeah, it looks like it's building up a good one. Say, uh, Blakey... That lead dog there, he's new, ain't he? Why, I guess you could call it that. Uh, that's Marco's dog. Marco traded with me. He, uh, he figured I'd be running closer to the storm, so I'd need a better lead dog than he would, so he, uh, he traded with me. I see. You see what? What's this all about? You act like it's a matter of life and death. The four of us talked it over while Blakey was unpacking his sled. It didn't add up. We agreed on that. At least it didn't add up the way Blakey was claiming. He was a born liar, we knew that, and Marco should have been at the trading post by now even if he had stopped off at Jackson River. Well, when Blakey came in, we ate, and then we waited some more. Still no sound of another dog sled or Marco. Wind seems to be slacking off some. Eh, blizzard ain't far off. Wind always slacks off first. Who's for game of pinochle? Well, what's the matter with all of you? You ain't spoke one decent word to me since I got here. Anybody think I was a wolf that sneaked in out of the woods or something? Well, why don't somebody say something? How'd you get that bruise under your eye, Blakey? How'd you get that bruise? You sit around and stare at me for a couple of hours, and then the only thing you can think of to say is, how'd you get that, Bruce? What happened? Did you get in a fight with somebody? I got the bruise from a rock. But how? I was working in the tunnel. We drove some rock, fell out of the roof, and a piece of it hit me. That's how I got it. You're lying. What's the matter with you, Bell? You're lying, I said. You fought with Marco. That's how you got it. I ain't fought with nobody. Why would I fight with him? We was partners. Was, Blakey? I, I mean, are. We still are. What did you fight about, Blakey? Nothing. We didn't fight about nothing. You've got to have some reason, Blakey. Partners don't start fighting over nothing. I mean, we wasn't fighting. Look, I don't know why Marco in here. I ain't his mother. Maybe he changed his mind. He said he was going to be here. That's all I know about it. Then why isn't he? He left before you did. You said so yourself. Where is he, Blakey? I don't know. What's the matter with all of you? You think I killed him or something? Yeah. What? That's right, Blakey. We think maybe you killed him. Oh, come off of it. You're out of your mind. You, you, you're kidding. That's what it is, a joke, huh? 
<laughs> Me killing old Marco. <laughs> That's a laugh for you. <laughs> You're going to tell us about it, huh? About what? There ain't nothing to tell. Now, look, if I had done something, why would I come straight here where you're all friends of his, where you're expecting him? Where else would you go? Well, to Jackson River. They don't have room to put a man up. All right, I could head for Dawson or south to Whitehorse. Storm too close, no time. Here only place. All right, answer me one thing. Why? Why do you think I'd kill him? Show him, LeClaire. Yeah. This might be the reason, Blakey. You've been going through my stuff. You got no right. We did it anyway. Now, what about this? I was going to tell you about that. I figured I'd wait and make it a kind of surprise. Surprise? It's rich quartz, Blakey. Must have opened up quite a pocket. It's the richest load between here and Mackenzie Bay. Not rich enough for two? Marco didn't even know about it. I stumbled onto it after he'd already left. That's why I was keeping it for a surprise. These two, Blakey? Were you keeping these for a surprise? I gave him those gloves and that writing tablet. And I knitted that pair of socks last winter. Well, he, he told me to pack up anything he'd missed, bring it along. That proves he was figuring to come here. Why? Well, look, I know you're worried about Marco and all. Do you? But you think in the wrong way, all of you. You're all, you're all wrong. You're mixed up. You're saying you didn't kill Marco. But you ain't saying it very good. Joe, show him what you found in the sled. You've got no right to bother my things. This. That's your knife, Blakey? It was a fox. I shot it on the trail. Skinned it for the dogs. That's how the blood got on it. You skinned fox. What'd you do with skin? I left it. I'm a miner, not a trapper. I don't know anything about skins. Now look, the whole bunch of you. I'm getting fed up with this. Questions accusing me. What do you think you are, a court of some kind? I don't have to answer anything. I ain't on trial. I'm going to turn in. <laughs> Next morning, the barometer dropped again, and we knew that blizzard would hit any minute. All that day, we sat huddled around at wood stove, not talking, just thinking about Marco and Blakey. And just after dark, Blakey went outside to settle his dog team. By the time he came back in, we decided... What are you all staring at? Blakey... We're going to give you a trial. A trial for what? Jury of your peers. That's the only law we got. That's all we're likely to have till spring. Robertson bypassed as he got on through to Dawson to be the blizzard. It's just you and us, Blakey. You're crazy. You ain't the law. Now, if you got anything to say in your own defense, any explanation... I ain't it. doing no more talking. You can't do nothing to me. Whatever you say, Blakey. Let's vote. Get it over with. If he won't talk, there ain't no use asking him anything else. I say he killed Marco. One vote guilty. Two. Of course he did it. Joe? He killed. There's three guilty and mine makes four. That's unanimous, Blakey. And just what do you aim to do about it? Well, we got to decide. Well, I'll decide for you. You ain't gonna do nothing. And you know why? Because of this. Grab him, Joe. Hold it. Now don't none of you move. Looks a little different now, don't Put it? Put it down, Blakey. That rifle won't get you out of this. It won't, huh? Well, I'd say it's made some changes already. Four to one. You felt mighty big, didn't you? Well, how do you feel now? Things is kind of even up a little, ain't they? You can't hold us at gunpoint all winter. I ain't figuring to. I'm getting out of here. And none of you better try to stop me. Where are you planning to go? That's my business. But I sure ain't going to stay around here no longer. Now, all of you, stay right where you are. He's crazy. Where could he get to? Nowhere's maybe, but he ain't thought that far. All he knows right now is he's going to get away. Well, what are you going to do about it? Get your rifles. We go after him. (laughs) 
You are listening to Judgment Day at Crippled Deer, tonight's presentation of Escape. Saturday night on CBS Radio's thrilling Western series called Gunsmoke, meet United States Marshal Matt Dillon. Marshal Dillon faces another problem this Saturday, a problem as real and vital as the Old West itself, and just as full of action as well. Don't miss the exciting, unusual drama on CBS Radio's Gunsmoke, Saturday night on most of these stations. And now, Escape and the second act of Judgment Day at Triple Deer. Tracking down a fellow man is not a pleasant thing, even though he's crazed with fear. But there was no choice. The four of us stood a moment longer looking at the door that had slammed shut behind Blakey and then... Ready? Yeah. Yeah, let's get it over with. Come on. Don't let him get away. Joe, you sick can you pick up his trail? He couldn't have got far. He ain't had enough time. Here. What? Tracks start here. Come. Oh. It's pitch dark to me. How can you see any tracks? Me see. Come. He seems to be heading back on the trail. On foot, without even snowshoes. He's out of his mind. Guilt and fear, they do funny things to a man. Leave trail now. Turn this way. Oh. Into the woods. Come. <laughs> Run. Get away from them. That's all he could think about there in the cabin. Crazy Clean out of his senses. Go on back. Stay away from me. He's holed up in that storage shed up on the creek bank. I saw the flash. Why don't we leave him there? Let him get snowed in. Let him starve. No, no, no. When a man begins to starve, he gets dangerous. He has that rifle and there's a whole case ammunition in that shed. He could hang around the cabin and pick us off one at a time. Me go. Me bring him. You think you can slip up on him, Joe? You talk. Shoot guns. Make noise. I go. Yeah. Blakey! Get out of here. Go back to the post. Maybe this will shake him up a little. <laughs> You're wasting your time. I got cover and you ain't. A dirty murderer. I'll blast him out of there no, if it's no, the last no, thing I hold it. You might hit the Indian. Why don't you tell us about it, Blakey? About Marco? Get it off your chest. Where did you bury him? I didn't bury nobody. You mean you left him for the wolves? If you don't stop saying that, I'll get every last one of you before. Hey, Joe must have got inside. You come now. Everything all right. No trouble. You come. All right. Let's go get him. We dragged him back to the post. We tied his hands together behind his back and locked him in one of the bunk rooms. Then we sat, the four of us. We didn't say much. Not looking at one another, knowing what we had to decide. Putting it off as long as we could. And then it was Belle who had been in love with Marco and was ready not to go to pieces any minute. Finally brought it out in the open. We can't sit here and put it off all winter. We gotta decide what we're gonna do, get it over with. I suppose you're right. You know I'm right. What's the matter with all of you? What are you afraid of? It's a big responsibility, Belle. Not for me. Maybe you can feel sympathy for him, but I don't... He don't even count. A hundred of him wouldn't make up for Marco. Perhaps you're right, Belle, but what I was thinking, Storm ain't hit yet, and as long as there's a chance Robertson will still come, well, maybe we ought to wait and leave it to him. After all, he's a law, it's his job. Red coat no come now. Blizzard too close. He go very fast to Dawson. No one spend winter here. Uh, Joe is right. We can't figure on turning Blakey over to the police. Robertson's already probably in Dawson. 
And we can't try to keep him prisoner clear through the winter. I guess we all agree on that. You know what I agree on. So I guess we better make up our minds, huh? Mine's made up now. You know that. Yes, I know that, Bell. Love, my people say, man who kills friend must die always. I don't know, LeClaire. Killing a man in a fight or a battle when you're crazy mad, that's one thing. But doing it in cold blood like this, well, it ain't easy to face it. It ain't the same. I guess we all feel that way about it. None of us want to do it. it. Looks to me like we don't have much choice. We don't. And the sooner the better. I don't know. The Mountie might still come. Make up your mind, Higgins. If you're afraid, say so. Well, it ain't that. You agree with the rest of us then, or don't you? Yeah. I agree. Well, it's settled then. Well, we might as well get it over with, huh? How are you thinking to do it, LeClaire? Well, hanging, that's the usual way, I guess. That roof pole outside the front of the cabin, we could take him up on the roof and tie the other end of the rope to that pole. Hmm? And then, and then make him step off. How much of a fall does it take? I only seen it done once down in the States. Wouldn't do to have it go wrong. No call for him to suffer any more than this. No, we do careful. We plan it all out. Stop huh? talking about it and do it. Do it and get it over with. We're going to, Bell. Well, get on with it. Oh, Joe, get a ladder up against the eaves out there, huh? Higgins and me, we cut a piece of rope. Good. No, I guess... We better tell him. Hang me. You've decided to hang me. Break. You don't even know what you're saying. People don't sit down and decide they're going to hang somebody and expect to get away with it. You can't take the law into your own hands. You're just making it harder for us, Blakely. Harder for you? I'll make it harder for you when Robertson shows up. Robertson ain't gonna show up. You're out of your minds. We gonna have to drag you, Blakey? You'll drag nobody. I'll walk. Let's see just how far you're planning to go with this. All right, we go out through the main room. Bell. Bell, you know what they're figuring to do? Yeah. We'll do something. Stop him. You're a woman, Bell. You, you, you're different. I wish there were ten of you, Blakey. So they could hang you ten times instead of once. Bell. Get him out of here. Take him out and get it over with. Yeah, come on. She's crazier than the rest of you. It's all crazy. It's all like a nightmare. Watch your step, LeClaire. That crust is freezing. It's slick. Yeah, yeah. Like it ain't real. It really happened. Not to me, anyway. You know, that wind has died down some. Always does, just before the blizzard hits. All right, Blakey. Climb up on the roof. Roof? Yeah, and you climb the ladder, you want us to help you. I can climb. You go up there by the ridge pole, Blakey, up there where Joe is standing. Yeah, better let me help you. A lot of snow on the roof. Made easy with your hands tied that way. All ready, rope tied. Everything ready. Oh. Well, might as well we get on with it, huh? Uh, maybe you better tie it around his neck, LeClaire. Huh? Uh, you seen it done once. If I can remember. Hey, Blakey, come stand closer to the edge here, huh? Uh, careful, Claire. It's, it's dark. Don't slip. Yeah, that's fine. Right there now. Well, it, it, it's right. a joke, huh? That's what... You, you gents are just trying to scare me so we can laugh about no, it afterwards. Hold still, Blakey. <laughs> a joke. Hold still. A real good joke. All right, that's time. <laughs> that, that's very is. funny. Well, it <laughs> looks like we're ready. Yeah. Well, you got any last words, Blakey? I guess you better say them now. Jump now. Joe. You jump. Stop pushing. You Just... jump now. We 
went inside. We left him swinging there, figured to take him down in daylight and bury him. I opened a bottle of brandy and we drank some fast in gulps. We needed it because it wasn't easy to do it. Not in cold blood that way. It didn't change much either when we stopped to think about it. It didn't bring Marco back to life, killing Blackie. Even Bell, who was crazy for revenge, was feeling sick. Then we got to thinking about Robertson, too, how he never missed stopping by before on his last trip out to Dawson. And then Joe heard it. Dogs! Here, dogs! Sled come! Robertson! I told you. I told you we ought to wait. Now we're in for we it. We gotta do something. We gotta think of something to tell him. Make up a story. What, with Blakey still hanging out there? What story? But we gotta do something. All we can do is tell him the truth and hope he sees it the way we did. He's an old-timer in the North. He'll understand. We'll make him understand. He'll be snowed in with us here. All us together for the rest of the winter. We'll make him understand. We did right. At least we know it. I think he will. Got a steak and a drink for a hungry man? Well? Marco. Marco! Why all the surprise? I promised you I'd be here, didn't I, Bill? Stopped over a couple of days in Jackson River. Dang, they got snowed in. Say, did uh, Blakey make it all right? He was going to leave the mine a couple of days after I did. Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you Judgment Day at Triple Deer by Les Crutchfield, starring Lawrence Dobkin with Harry Bartell. Featured in the cast were Lou Krugman, Georgia Ellis, James Nusser, and Clayton Post. Your announcer, George Walsh. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week. You are standing alone in a mountain village somewhere in the puppet country of Andorra. The high crags of the Pyrenees trapping the last of the daylight. And you know that in one of the stone houses facing you, behind one of the doors that is closed against you, is a beautiful woman whom you must find before she meets her death. So listen next week when Escape brings you Kathleen Height's story, The Wall. Saturday night on CBS Radio, gangbusters reveal the true facts behind a fantastic hotel holdup in which three comical bad guys with a wicked sense of humor terrorize Manhattan hotel guests, rob them, and vanish into the night after commandeering the hotel for their own high profit without interference. Hear gangbusters through crime case history Saturday night on most of these stations. Listen while you work. Enjoy young Dr. Malone every Monday through Friday in the daytime on the CBS Radio Network.